Hello, everyone, and welcome to Behind the Story here on Keystroke Medium. I'm Scott Moon here with Jacob Cooper, and today we are talking with Josh Hayes, one of 14 authors who contributed to Explorations through the Wormhole Anthology by Woodbridge Press. The Exploration series is a collection of themed short stories set in a shared universe where authors were given a set of rules and technology and set loose to create or destroy or whatever they chose to do. Uh, Josh Hayes is known for the science fiction series Second Star, including Breaking Through and The Forgotten Prince. He contributed The Lost Colony, and today we're going to talk with him about what inspired the story and what it's like to write in a shared universe. All right, Josh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your writing to get things started? Absolutely, I can. I've been uh, writing in some form or another for probably 20 years or so. I uh, started out uh, in a notebook when I was 14 and wrote out my first story and then uh, got a typewriter and typed on the typewriter for a while and then got a Tandy 1000 computer with the five and a quarter inch discs and I remember that. that. Oh I yeah. That. They were great floppies. fun. Oh yeah. I had hey, like 1800 floppy floppies for my stories. Yeah. <laughs> they stored like two, two uh, mega pixels or yeah, whatever. Oh yeah. So I've been writing for a while, but I just recently in 2014 started taking it a little bit more seriously, seeing how indie publishing was kind of coming into its own in 14 and, and everybody was kind of being successful with it and making it kind of a viable platform to write and publish. I wanted to give it a try. Uh, Scott and I, you, uh, you and I met up in about 2013, 2012 and started talking about writing and, and actually seeing yeah. you uh, publishing your series is kind of what led me to start trying to, to publish my own. And I went through several ideas before I hit second star and um, Second Star is basically a, a science fiction kind of reimagining of Peter Pan and Neverland. And uh, wanted to kind of just... Like Second Star to the right on yep. the morning? Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, okay. And uh, I, I came up, I, I wanted to write... Uh, I was writing some science fiction that I had uh, planned for years and... It wasn't going where I wanted it to go, so I just kind of sat down one day with a, a pen and a pad of paper and was kind of big brainstorming chief paper ideas. And a crayon. It was uh, it was not big chief, but I think it was a crayon. And uh, <laughs> I said, "What kind of idea do I want to write?" And I said, uh, "Maybe I could take a fairy tale and turn the hero into the bad guy." And so, in mm. my story, Pan is actually the bad guy for the majority of the story, and. Um, it follows the, the characters are named the same Wendy, Michael, John. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of the characters from the original book are named characters in my series. Um, so like Starkey is a, uh, one of the crew members of hook ship. He's in the story. He's just a tertiary character, but there's a lot of kind of cool Easter eggs like that. And, uh, it's not finished. I'm writing the third book now. And, uh, I just started writing short stories here in the last year, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, that was actually a question I have for you, Josh, is, uh, you know, you say you've been writing for 20 years, and you have all these five-and-a-quarter-inch floppy disks and whatever. I mean, what, what were you writing? Were you writing short stories early on, especially younger, or were you trying to write the full-length book? You know, I uh, when I first started writing, I didn't have any idea what a novel or a short story or a novella was. I just wrote the yeah. story so my first story which i actually have around here somewhere is in a one subject uh like wide rule notebook and notebook yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that whole story is fill it it takes up that whole notebook beginning to end and i just i i didn't do any plotting or anything because i didn't know what plotting was at the time i just wrote the story and then uh i wrote a one hundred thousand word kind of james bond Mm, ish kind of story where the guy was a badass and did a whole bunch of cool things, but it really didn't have any stories. It, it was just a, him like shooting kinda guns like a, and kind of like a James Bond story. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, but, so, but a hundred thousand words, Josh is. I mean, how old were you? I mean, that, that that's a decent length, right? Uh, I mean, that's a real novel. Yeah, uh, I and I wrote it on a typewriter, and wow. uh, I wrote that when I was fifteen, I think. See, I think that's a major accomplishment for a fifteen-year-old oh, yeah. to to go and write a hundred thousand words. I mean, not all of us are Christopher Paulini, who wrote Aragon. Um, yeah, Aragon. Aragon, Aragon it was yeah. you know, fifteen. He's, but um, yeah, he's good. 
But but I, I think that's a tremendous accomplishment, man. That gives me some insight to your your background as an author and your your determination for it. And, and especially on a typewriter. I mean, really. Oh, <laughs> I, I tell you, man. And I I've got that one around here. I, I kept pretty much everything I've ever written, either on disc or in paper form. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of yeah. a lot of it is horrible, like unedited, just words, which is what makes a great first draft now. Um, Mm -hmm. but yeah, there was a lot lot of of that stuff though. I've gone back and looked at old stories. A lot of it, if you trim the fat out of it, you'd be surprised. There's some, some gems in there with that. There's good bones, right? I mean, there's good bones People not to be cliche, but it's true. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so I've, I've written, uh, some, uh, novels that didn't really go anywhere. I wrote, uh, a sequel to the first novel I wrote, and then I wrote a few short stories, but I really didn't understand what short stories were all about. I tried to send them off to like publishers. And of course I got the rejection letter, but I didn't really send that many cause I wasn't really interested in short stories. Uh, right. I, didn't, I didn't really get it at that time. Um, and then I, I dropped off writing for a number of years and then just recently came back, like I said, but yeah, well life happens. I remember, um, I remember when you first told me about the idea for second star and that whole series, I remember how excited you were. And you're, you're telling it to me, and I just kind of letting you go. It's fun to see it, see an artist be grabbed by the muse. And, this is what I'm going to do. Watch this. Yeah, you know, that was pretty cool. I still remember that. And I've read, read, uh, read pretty much most of what you have in that series so far. And and I think you're right about how you, Pan being, I would call him more of a uh, complex antagonist than a, a traditional bad right. guy. So, but yeah, it's 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 a good it's a good series, good idea, and I, I remember seeing the start of your creative creative process a yeah. while back. You don't always get that with another writer. Right, writers are solitary creatures. It's true. That's true. It's very true. Sometimes, unless they're on the internet. So, <laughs> who, Josh, right now, like who, you know, favorite books? What what are things that inspire you? Authors, books. What what are you into right now? Uh, I'm I I tend to read like five or six books at a time. Uh, I listen on audiobook and then I also read uh, on Kindle and paper book. Uh, I have to say that my favorite books right now are probably uh, Sanderson's Mistborn, the first, the first trilogy, The Final Empire, The Will of Ascension, The Hero of Ages. Uh, those, those books, like after reading those books and went back and looked at my own writing, I really just wanted to burn the computer to the ground <laughs> and <laughs> buy a whole new computer and start over. Because those books, you know, after I read the first one, and I don't know if you guys have read them or not. Well, I, Scott, I know you've read them. And, uh, right. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I read the first book, and I, it took me a while to get into it because I really was – he he sells it as a heist story that's set in a mm-hmm. fantasy world. And I, I didn't want to read a high story. I, I was like, right. is that going to be like Ocean's Eleven? Or, you know, I wasn't, that didn't intrigue me. But eventually I did pick it up and I did read it. And it's a phenomenal book. And then when I finished the first one, I was like, there's no way the second one can be that good. And I read the second one and I thought, there's no way the third one can be that good. And I finished the third one and my mind was completely blown. Uh, and so those, those series, like, looking at, and I was explaining it to my neighbor who she just finished the first book last night and she's waiting for the two other books to come in and, and explaining the books to her as a writer reading it, just seeing every little piece that he put in the first book that made the first book cool and you're like, yeah. right, yeah yeah, and you know, like uh, for instance I won't give it away, but um, Vin talking to her brother in the first book mm-hmm. when that comes around in the third book and you're like, holy crap that like blew my mind when I figured out what it was. I tell you yeah. what, man, I, I, I didn't start writing until after that series. That is the series that inspired me to even try. And that was in 2009. So I, I've not been writing nearly as long as you guys, but I, I know that feeling of being blown away by that series. Yeah. Um, and I've listened, gone back and listened to it several times since. And it's just, you know, I, yeah, now I'm looking at it through the eyes of, a, of an author. And I'm like, I see what you did there. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well done. Yeah. Well played. All right, Josh, tell us about uh, Lost Colony, your short story for the uh, anthology. Lost Colony, I think, was maybe my second or third idea. And actually, it's, it's pretty funny because the original title was The Path Home. And that's how I think of the – that's how I titled it in my head. So now every time I'm saying The Lost Colony, I'm like, is that really the title? But whatever, right. um, yeah. you know, Ralph 
uh, we had Ralph Kern on the show uh, as our first guest when we had our first live show, and he read Breaking Through and loved it and said, hey, I think you'd be really good in this anthology we're putting out. I'd like you to, to come up with a short story. It's about wormholes. And I was like, okay, that's cool. 14 authors. I don't want to write the same thing as 14 authors. So they sent me the, the information on it, and I said, okay, so what's happening here? Are people writing about going through and they're closing? And he said, yeah, there's a whole bunch of these stories. There's some of these stories. You know, see if you can do something different. I said, all right. What happens if they get stuck in it? And he goes, inside the wormhole? I said, yeah, what happens if they get stuck in it? And they're like, I don't think anybody's doing that. And so I said, okay, I'll go with that one. Man, and that makes my brain spin just right. Like I, I can't even, I can't even like come up with an answer that's even a third the way intelligent on that. That's an awesome concept. Right? Uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a great concept, and it speaks to your primal fears. Okay, I'm going to go through this wormhole. I don't know where I'm going. What's the worst could happen? Worst that there could you happen? Go. Yeah, well, I could, that's right. I could get stuck you in get the stuck middle. In yeah, that would be bad. And so that would really put a cramp on it. It would really ruin your day, kind of, and uh, <laughs> and all so, the days to come. So I. I, I took that concept and then he had a timeline and on the timeline he had several different things if you wrote in say I don't know I'm just throwing out a year 2532 or something if you wrote in that year then you had this technology and that and then behind you if you wrote any time before that then you'd have to nix out all the technology after right so I looked at the list of technology and one of the cool things I saw was intelligent animals and I was like I want to do that because I've always wanted to do kind of like a, a, a animal sidekick. And I was like, that'll be cool. So that was the second point of the story. And then um, I created a, a little race of monkeys called Chatter Monkeys. And uh, he's an, very intelligent. And I, I, I picture him as kind of like a howler monkey, like that size. But he's silver mm -hmm. and purple. And he's got huge ears, like up here. And so that's why they call him ears. Um, and, and actually I just, mm -hmm. uh, Jacob is doing the audio version for the story and he, he sent me a text and he says, Hey, what are your voice thoughts on these characters? And I said, you have to give him a deep voice. That's, that's all I care about is you have to give him a deep voice. And he came up with a, a like <laughs> the most phenomenal voice for this maybe creature. We could hear a maybe we could hear a sample of and the Howler Monkey. If we could get like just a, a just a tinge of ears. Now, Josh, I have to tell you that when I first thought about ears as a character, I did not think of this voice because he's a little monkey that sits right up here on your shoulder. You do you know what I mean? Oh, but the more we got into him, the more I said, you know, this is the voice of ears. Yes. That is brilliant. It's, uh, that's it. exactly because he's very... Originally, I had it planned out where he was going to say something sarcastic for every line, and it was going to be... Right. Um, I'm going to take... He's going to be a huge movie freak, and he's going to take all these quirky lines from all these movies and put it into the story. And then I was like, yeah, that's getting a little carried away. That's going to take a ton of research, and I'm just going to make him very sarcastic. So I made him sarcastic. Uh, yeah. picked a, pick up uh, some other characters. My favorite uh, TV show, science fiction TV show of all time is Firefly. I love the way those characters interact, and I thought if I could get that type of feeling into this story i think story, people yeah. i think it would resonate with a whole lot of people and it has um so you know i came through with the idea they get stuck in the wormhole uh after trying to uh get through it illegally and that's that's where the story takes you there's some technology that i threw in that kind of keys into the story and has some significance in the story later on um and it was it was super fun to write i uh i actually wrote it as a project on YouTube where I videotaped myself writing the entire story. And so there's, I right. think there's like 10 episodes on my YouTube channel where you can go and just watch from, no be kidding. from beginning to end. You can watch my, uh, my creation of the short story. It was pretty interesting. Are those over on your personal side or, yeah. or do you have those on, on there? Yeah, those yeah. are on my personal YouTube page. That's cool. So, we have to link that. So, I mean, Josh, if you hadn't, before you said you didn't even know what a short story was, really. I mean, and you didn't get it. I mean, what what's it like having the constraints of writing in a, a shared universe, yet trying to do something unique at the very same time? And you're not sure what, you're not really sure what authors after or before you in the timeline are doing. What what was that like in your head and the process you went through? You know, that's, that's a great question, because that... 
a, a lot of the time when I was writing it, I was thinking, do other people have this in their story? Like, do they right. have, uh, for instance, the uh, the enemy units, quote unquote, in my in my uh, story are called the System Transit Authority. They they re- regulate all the the traffic through this wormhole, uh, and so I was wondering, does every story have this? Uh, for instance, I read your story, Jacob, and they don't. You don't have any kind of regulatory thing on it, and I, I don't think there's a lot of other people that don't either. Uh, but then I figured. It, it it doesn't really matter because it could be anywhere in the timeline. So it could be yeah. even if it's only a couple of years after somebody else had written a story, maybe in between that time they figured we need to regulate this. And if it comes before some story that doesn't have the regulatory commission or whatever, uh, maybe they decided they – they didn't need it anymore. So it have been a huge, huge scandal, and the right. entire organization imploded. They decided to go with just yeah home rule. And but, so, but, but even even beyond that, Josh, even beyond that, who says when they come back, you know, they go through a wormhole in in a story, and then they come back, who says they're still in the same actual dimension? It, you know, we, we never in the story we never messed with parallel dimensions much in this book, but there's nothing saying that you came back exactly to that same time that you left or that same dimension you left and that that's all still very theoretical within right. the, the see, my, the community. So my story doesn't uh, my story doesn't end with them coming home mm. they they go someplace completely different and uh that that's the twist in the story at the end um the only thing i wish i would have done a little different is um have a little bit more uh the main character captain hale he's driving the story up until the last like i don't know half a third of the book like the very last chapter when it kind of has the twist and i couldn't figure out really to make him how to how to drive it forward anymore it was just kind of a revelation type ending um so i don't know if i would have changed that at all but i i really i really like the way the story came out um uh finishing all the way through and i think it's probably the first short story that I've ever created and then finished in uh, and then gone back and re-edited and stuff uh, ever in my whole well, writing career. So. You, you knocked it out of the park. I mean, well, I, I mean, e- even the reviews that are coming in for explorations, they they're often mentioning your story as one of the, the their favorites, you know, of these reviewers. And uh, I mean. It's got to be challenging when you're working with a bunch of different authors, like you were saying. But at some point, you got to say, uh, "It really, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to have to go for it here and do my own thing." Right, yeah. and that's you know, I, I, for our next anthology, First Contact, we've had uh, like uh, Ralph and I are working very closely on on just a single scene, um, where our scene, we have a scene that's in both books. And when you read Ralph's book, you get one half of the scene. And then when you read my book, you get the other half of the scene. Uh, and then also in that scene, Scott's ship leaves and they watch Scott's ships leave. So it's like a trifecta of stories like it's coming together. Trifecta of story awesomeness. Um, but yeah, in the, wormhole, really cool. in the wormholes uh, series, it was uh, it was just kind of pick and go. And, and, and I did. I, I think it came out really good. All right, Josh, where can we find more of your uh, books and stories? Uh, I have a personal website. You can go to joshayswriter.com. Uh, if you sign up for my newsletter, you get book two of the Second Star series for free, The Forgotten Prince. Um, also, uh, we have, Scott and I, we have a website, keystrokemedium.com, where you can find all the rest of these wormhole interviews and all of our other shows uh, that we have recorded uh, are live in the Right Stuff show there on keystrokemedium.com. All right, everyone, this has been Explorations Through the Wormhole. For Scott Moon, I'm Jacob Cooper, and we've been Behind the Story of The Lost Colony by Josh Hayes. Through the Wormhole is available now on Amazon, published by Woodbridge Press, where you can find Josh's story along with many others. So be sure to pick it up. You can find the link to the book in the description below, and if you like the stories, we always appreciate honest reviews. Be sure to leave one. Thanks a lot.